Hello everybody, welcome to the Rise of Skywalker spoiler video. Uh, if you watched our non-spoiler video, you know, we made a lot of references that are hopefully, or are going to be addressed here. Um, and let's just, just well, let's recap you, the rating. What'd you uh, give it? A five. Seven and a half. I'm seven, seven and, and a half. half. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're just going to get right into this. So, obviously I didn't like this movie and I'm going to get into why. So, this title crawl. It's talking about uh, Darth City or Emperor Palpatine, which like nobody calls him ever. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever said that. And they're like, Emperor Palpatine is uh, sending messages through the Force or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. And the idea of Emperor Palpatine even being in this, uh, this movie and Snoke being like just killed and just like kind of this pawn is kind of dumb. And I get it. Like Snoke theories... You know, we're getting out of hand. Some people were saying crazy stuff. And I'm not saying he had to be Darth Plagueis, though it would have made sense because mm -hmm. they literally play the music. Because watching these uh, episodes seven and eight, I noticed that they play the music from the scene where they talk about Darth Plagueis in episode three every time Snoke is on screen, which is like. But it looked like really Snoke funny. was a clone. No, no, I was basically. Yeah, so they, they have like parts of him in these little containers yeah. on Exagon mm -hmm. or Exagon. 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 Yeah, thank you. And, you know, they're basically, and then he's like, does three different voices, like Darth Vader, yeah. he's like, I've been all the voices in your head, <laughs> which we never knew that Darth Vader even spoke to him, because yeah. if he did, wouldn't he be like, hey, I'm good now, yeah. don't be evil, yeah. Kylo, <laughs> or whatever. This is grandpa yeah. talking. Yeah, it's like, hey, <laughs> stop being evil, you don't need to be conflicted, but whatever, you know, the mask, and, but... This movie, um, he, so they go through this cave and they see the parts of Kylo and, you know, you see the Emperor's alive and he's like, how are you alive, Emperor? And he literally says the dark side are, is a pathway to many abilities, some considered to be unnatural. Yeah, from, yeah. He's like, that's it. Yeah. I was like, anything else? Are yeah. you going to explain how you survived the blown up Death Star? No? Okay. Wow. That, that's literally what he does. Yeah. I was like, so you made a new body, transferred your consciousness and like soul into it. When a Death Star blew up. Now, Darth Plagueis, they never explained, or I think they might have in, like, Legends and, like, other stuff, but they never explained in the movies how he died, and I've, I've never looked it up, but I'm assuming it was, like, a lightsaber Didn't he say that he killed him? Yeah, yeah. In the sleep, Palpatine his student killed him? Killed him? But they, I'm saying, like, how he actually died. Mm -hmm. You know, if oh, it was okay. a lightsaber duel, you know, or a lightsaber wound, he might have brought himself back. But if a, if something explodes in the smithereens and atoms, how, how do you survive that? Mm -hmm. And more than that, how do you translate your consciousness into another body? You cloned mm -hmm. yourself? They do break down the like force. that. Yeah, <laughs> the force. Yeah, the force. Like it's that's so lazy. And the fact that he's and people in our theater were like, ha, I know that line. And I was like, You guys think that's funny? Like that's so lazy. And I got mad. I was like, you that's really it. what yeah. you're gonna do is that the dark side and I was just like, Okay, you know. I kinda then, wish that they left it a surprise that Palpatine was in it. Like don't put him in the trailer, well, they, don't put him in the beginning. Yeah. Well they knew like, this you know like I mean? big bad because they've established in the previous two that Kylo's conflicted. So they're like we have nothing But the big bad is a mystery guy who's still calling the shots. Like you could have yeah, left it if like you think that. about the original trilogy, Darth or Darth Sidious was not in the first one. He appears in one mm -hmm. scene in Empire mm -hmm. and it's like, ooh, who's that? And in Return of the Jedi he's like he's, reveals he's, himself. Mm -hmm. In this trilogy Snoke was in the first movie for like one scene. You're like, oh who is that? Yeah. So it's basically one movie behind and the second movie is kind of his return of the jedi so they kill him in order for kylo to be whatever and uh you know making himself the supreme leader but like emperor palpatine in this movie is just like here and mm -hmm. i'm like why even the whole idea of that is because i don't think for a second that jj abrams planned on snoke dying from ryan johnson i don't think he did ryan either. johnson probably should no have called him up and be like hey like <laughs> i'm killing snoke so yeah. Maybe just say he can cheat death and it has the, you know, abilities that some consider to be unnatural because we need, you know, we don't need to bring back Palpatine. And then JJ's like, no, no, nostalgia. I'm gonna yeah. bring that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got and, the answer. But do you, okay, do you think they did it for nostalgia or they did it yes. for the Ray thing? Yeah, no, nostalgia. Because, well, the Ray, and then also, the last Jedi also says, your parents were nobodies. Yeah. So then they're like, damn, JJ's yeah. like, you're taking away all my stuff. Yeah, like, you're so, ruining the story. But yeah. why do they have to make him the kid? Like, I get that's a Star Wars staple thing, like you're related to this no, person, they, but you can't be more but, creative. Well, the reason, the reason they had to is because people were like, how is she she's so, so good strong yeah. in the Force? And if she's not a Skywalker, who else is really strong in the Force? Well, Palpatine, obviously. Exactly. But, I mean, no, but I'm saying, like, I question. feel like the new these new Star Wars, the Force is just, everybody has it. But the Finn has it? He's like, it. So, something's in trouble. <laughs> like, he has the exact same where weird. he can sense Force. That was I'm so like, lazy. come on. Yeah, so you're, 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 you don't have the Force. Not but, everybody okay. has the Force. But there's like also, that. like, this idea, because the it's whole like, thing of it. Anakin in the, original, in the prequel trilogy is he's almost like Jesus. And, you know, he's a he is. He was born with I know. Here's the thing. The, the actual, they explain it in like comics that are canon that Anakin's actual father is uh, Darth Plagueis. 
they conspired to make Anakin with the Force. Wow. Yeah, wow. I kind of wish crazy. I told you before we started filming this. I'll explain more That's after. That's crazy. But it's actually something at first I was mad about. But the story kind of makes sense because Palpatine is technically related to Anakin because he made him, mm -hmm. but they're not like blood related. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to the whole story of this movie. Like, you don't need to share somebody's blood to have their honor and family because Kylo Ren is like, I won't be evil like Darth Vader. And Ray's like, I won't be evil like Palpatine. But it's also messily done. And the chosen one of uh, Anakin being the chosen one is just thrown out the window because Ray's the chosen one. And she really killed Palpatine. What he did with throwing Palpatine down the Death Star is meaningless because yeah. he's right back with his little great white shark eyes. <laughs> yeah, and then, the, the, and then yeah, is, the um, is that electric thing like a genetic power? Because I guess she's so. on the good side yeah. and she can use that when, power. When you know? was that able to just blow up a ship like that? Yeah. He just blew it up. And more than that. I was that, so worried about you. I thought that was real. They gave everybody uh, else an honorable death, but they killed my guy like that? Like, come yeah, on. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like, Count Dooku and Darth Sidious have been shown to be the only two people in Star Wars, like, you know, canon in the movies um, that can use force lightning. And everybody else who has done it in the Old Republic and stuff were clearly, like, extremely, you know, difficultly trained and very specifically trained. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult. But she's like, <laughs> just throws it out. Like, it's nothing. And Surprise. it's like, oh, yeah. okay, so you can just do that too. Yeah. What can't you do? We should start writing down things she can't do because she stops the ship like it's nothing. Luke couldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. um, Anakin struggled to do that. Force heals. Yeah, just oh, force, force heals, heals, which is like yeah. th something they've established in like video games. Yeah. But this is not a video game. No, it's a movie. That should not, in my opinion, be present in movies. At least not to the extent where it's like stabbed you. Nope, you're healed. Yeah. And it's just so late. It's just like constantly happening. And it's like, what are you even doing? And what rate, yeah. What can't she do? Some reviewer said, did she ever get hurt besides the end of the movie? No, I don't think she ever. Like, seriously, did she, was she ever in pain? But that's what they're Both like, of them had like their arms chopped powerful. off. You know what I mean? She was just too Way powerful. Way too powerful. And like, so her arc, I was, I was talking about this in the spoiler video. So she's like confused on who she's be who she is, and then she's mm -hmm. like, I have all these powers, she but you know, <laughs> who, who she is, and she's like, I have all these powers, but you know, I'm not related to anybody, and that's kind of something interesting. It's like, well, you know, again, like your blood isn't determined by this and this, but you can still help us. But then in this movie, she's just like conflicted about like what exactly. She's just mm -hmm. like, and then she kills Chewie, and she's like, I'm just too strong. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is this arc? And Finn in this movie, like I said. The, the scene that made me mad was when they were lightsaber fighting on the, you know, whatever those things were in the water. Okay. And he's like, Ray! Oh, he's yeah. Like, what are you doing? Distracting her. Yeah. Yeah. Like, She's like, get away. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what are you even doing You're here? Is this what he's become? Yeah. Like, John Boyega is way too good for that. They've, and, they, yeah. yeah. They, he, you know, and that was the hard thing about Finn. Finn is like, you know, for me, like, even from Force Awakens time, like, he just seemed like, you know, just... A tryhard? Yeah. And, and... You know, I wish he had more. Like, mm -hmm. I just wish he had more. I don't more. like that they let him, like, be Force-sensitive like that. No, no, he's no, not no. Force-sensitive. Well, he, can, he, he says, says he feels he says stuff. He feels. That's, that's not Force-sensitive. That's lazy writing. <laughs> but that's according it. to them, that it is the no, Force. No, but maybe, you know? like... Because he's talking to her, he's no, like, the Force flows no, through all been of us. Moments, it's in everything. There's been a moment, like, though, and everybody's yeah, like, that was like a Ron oh, I just feel something. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, though. It's just kind of just, like... Also, the kid with the broom at the end of Last Jedi, irrelevant. Yeah. I mean, honestly, well, he was force sensitive because he did the thing. Yeah, I know, I know what he did, but he's completely irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. He's the next like, Anakin, man. I guess so. And because Everybody, they always got to start right. from slaves. They, they got to start from slaves. They basically said that Anakin's entire life was useless because the, a lot of the story yeah. around the prequels. And, and this, all right, this, uh, this is not my original thought. I saw this online. The uh, whole story of the prequels and eventually originals revolves around Anakin turning evil because he loves Padme. Because the Jedi forbid his love with Padme, mm -hmm. and then he's like, the Jedi corrupt, I can see it. And then Palpatine points out some of these flaws, and Palpatine's very yeah, alluring, yeah. and you know, he's very like, ooh, I see the type of things that you know you can offer me. Anakin says that, and then like is kind of going to his side because he's like, I can save Padme. And then this movie's like, well, death it doesn't even matter because I can just stop it two seconds later. And I was like, well, what's the point of even having this movie? Yeah. The movie doesn't even feel dangerous. Like, the stakes don't feel existent. Because all logistically, this is what I was talking about when I said logistical implications. How can you build, like, a thousand Star Destroyers without anybody knowing on a planet that doesn't even seem I to thought, have I heard tears. that it was when he was, when Darth Vader was alive. This is one of those, like, canon things that he was secretly sending ships from the Empire to that planet. And Maybe. That's I mean, I moving. guess so. But Just, they all had death rate guns yeah. on them. Like, so, huge. The Death Star is powered by a huge kyber crystal, which are, like, extremely rare. Like, how did they get... 
thousands of them. Yeah, because the one like, in the last movie was eating suns. Yeah, I was like, okay, so that happens now. You just eat suns. When did you get that technology? Because whatever. But it's like, how did you even get? And then when they have these like light, uh, these big, you know, Death Star things, mm -hmm. and don't they don't even feel dangerous. They no. just feel like I'm like this is lame. Because they have too many of them. Yeah, they have way you too know? many. That, that one Death Star was a big thing because your your folk your focus was put on that as an audience member. You were like, oh, well, this is what we're looking at. This is dangerous for our heroes. Our heroes go to stop this. This movie's like, well, we have thousands of them. And you have very few ships, so you're just going to charge them and loot. Yeah. But that's what I was saying in the other video. I did like how they went to the Death Star. Yeah. How you can see, like, the remnants of it, you know? I didn't understand the whole dagger knife thing and how it lined up, because technically the Death so Star was broken. Stupid. So that would have meant it had to have break, like, was destined to break like that, you know? Well, one thing, too, is I, that I thought was actually really good was when she was walking through the, uh, like, little... I don't know. I think it might have been the throne room from Return of the Jedi. You heard yeah, a little musical was. cue, yeah. which is the same music that plays when Darth Vader's face reveals itself. Mm -hmm. It's like the slower version of the Imperial March. I thought that was a cool. Yeah, well, I like, cue. And I, I like that yeah, scene. I thought like, that was I don't know good. Instrument it was, but it was like uh, it was like harpy, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, and it sounded really nice. Um, that, and that they was called cool. it the Sith Wayfinder. Like you can't yeah, come up with that, a better name. Um, I thought it was a know? holocron at first, and then they ruined it, and they're like, no, it's not a holocron. It's a wayfinder. I was like, like that's so that lame. Yes, system. Yeah, <laughs> that was super lame. And I want to point out one of my least favorite individual lines in this whole movie. Where he's talking to Palpatine, and he's like, oh, you would do this for me. Uh, do what Vader could not. And I was like, okay, let's break that down. Yeah. Let's see what Vader could not yeah. do. Okay, well, he became your apprentice, which you would look. So he's basically saying what Vader did was failed, and I, that means I failed. Me, Palpatine, who, let's see what I did. I destroyed the Jedi, who I hated for however many years I was alive, and completed the Sith's goal of destroying the Jedi. Ruled over the galaxy for like 45 years with an iron fist, made a full army, controlled, made the first galactic empire, mm -hmm. and did a slew of other things. But because this movie's asking me to say that all that was a failure, I will say it's a failure. Yeah. So you can kill me, Ray. <laughs> I was like, are you that lazy? Success is only defined up to the point where you give it the meaning of success. And that's like me saying like Hitler or Napoleon were successful generals because they eventually died. Everybody eventually dies. Yeah. So just because Palpatine lost in the end after like 45 to 50 years of like reign over the galaxy, that means that yeah. he failed. That is not how that works. That's but they kept using uh, Vader to like manipulate Kylo Ren. Yeah. Throughout every movie. It was Vader wasn't like, I was like, can we just get somebody's voice or yeah. something? And then when he said the thing about when he used James Earl Jones' voice, that means that he used the, that voice to influence Kylo with mm -hmm. off screen, you know, in previous mm -hmm. movies. Cause, and obviously that is probably where Kylo's worship of Vader starts from. That also means that before when Ben turned evil and had those negative thoughts and like the flashbacks we see from The Last Jedi, they're probably from Palpatine or Snoke, who he's controlling, mm -hmm. which means that Palpatine was alive like for a long time just assembling this you know army doing nothing. And then that basically cheapens the idea of Snoke. And then that means Kylo Ren is just a discount Anakin. Mm. Because what Palpatine was doing to Anakin was sending um, sorts of messages. They weren't really evil ones, but he was sending these messages of like, oh, I'm going to become evil or something. But then I was just like, so what's the point of even having Kylo? Because this whole character in this trilogy has just been a discount Anakin. It's like him being conflicted. Mm -hmm. But his whole thing is he doesn't even have a goal. He just yeah. starts killing people no. because he's mad that <laughs> And Luke he's so tried angry and he destroys yeah. everything he's in every movie. He's not intimidating like Vader where he's got that quiet mm -hmm. presence. Yeah. He's literally just angry and just decides to kill people. And I was like, okay, well, Anakin, you can at least see that he sees the flaws of the Jedi. Palpatine is alluring to him. Padme is kind of forbidden from him. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that the whole idea of um, peace and security and freedom and justice and all that is shown to be able to be accomplished through Palpatine. Palpatine's like, well, we can achieve peace through uniform kind of control of the galaxy, like this totalitarian regime. But Pal Kylo's motivation is just like, I just hate Luke Skywalker and my parents. Like, yeah. I'm just going to go kill people. And I was like, that's so lame. And even it says in the title crawl that he's just going around killing people because he's mad about hearing Palpatine's voice. Mm. What does that yeah. even mean? What I think his mean? character arc could have been so much stronger if they could did it been. better because like he had a lot of the tools necessary to make it an emotional story. Yeah. You know, mm. where his uncle and his family and he went against them. His parents still yeah. love him. Speaking of, I didn't really like how they brought Harrison Ford back on that thing. Yeah, we talk about that Because bit. also, yeah. he, he didn't look like Harrison Ford to me. I don't know why. <laughs> That was, it was, it was well, right? The, it was the thing, too, yeah. that annoys me about Kylo is that people online... I've, I've read an article by like a credible news source who said he is the best Star Wars villain ever. I, and oh it's the closest I've gosh. ever come to having a heart attack because it literally <laughs> was like, Kylo Ren is complex. And all these people online say he's complex because he's conflicted. No, he's not. He is just angry that Luke tried to kill him, which was dumb in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing, that Luke tried to kill a teenager. But whatever. But he literally goes around and is just like... 
Well, he says that line, like, I don't know if I have the strength to need to, what, yeah. to be done or whatever. I was like, but what does need to be done? What are you trying to do? Last time he do? said that he killed his dad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, what are you trying to do here? You're just mad at, like, Luke, so you're just going to start the First Order? Which, by the way, what were they the First Order of? That was a stupid title. I also and don't then, like the Knights, the Knights of Ren. Yeah, well, I remember hearing that they were going to be in this movie and being kind of, like, hyped up. Like, uh, oh, we finally get to see them. And then they, they look nothing. like Lord of Ring characters yeah, to they me. Like I was the like, like, they're like the Nazgul. Yeah, he's like the <laughs> Witch King. I, I yeah. was very confused. And, and then, then their weapons aren't that cool. Yeah, like, they're not cool. And they're he just kills them all. Yeah. That scene at the end of the movie where he hops in the cave, like wearing his civilian clothes, yeah. and he gets like the gun. I was laughing. I was like, this sucks. Yeah. This action yeah. is bad. And these people aren't like. It was so lame. It was so lame. You can keep talking. For and me. also that like actually, I'm gonna wait to get to that cave because the last act of this movie is its own thing. Okay. But I. Uh, I just want to go back to the fact that Palpatine didn't need to be in this movie and is so shoehorned in that I genuinely think they could have made another bad guy. Good. Like, be creative. Yo. They had you know, Snoke, like, and then but Ryan Johnson. Oh, now. it's Ryan Johnson's fault. That, okay. But here's the thing: it's J.J. Abrams. Snoke fault. has a twin brother. No, for no, not, no, for not no. It's J.J. Abrams' fault movie? for just having no, no, no. It's J.J. Right. Abrams' fault for not having Snoke just be like, nope, I'm gonna heal myself. If that but ability he was, was so ab- yeah, dude. He, oh, right. oh, oh yeah, but Palpatine Darth was Maul blown was up. Ha- Darth Maul was cut in half. Palpatine was obliterated <laughs> yeah. into atoms, <laughs> but yet he can't survive being cut in half when he is supposedly Darth Plagueis, or at least some sort of descendant of Darth Plagueis. They could have easily just been like, "Oh, well, Snoke's alive." That would have been significantly less lazy, as lazy as that is, than being like, "I'm here." And yeah. I've been hiding. But a lot of people online stories. were complaining ah, that ah, they did ah. not want that. Like, they, they were saying, you better not bring Snoke back. Like, well, they also... Uh, I know, I'm just saying that. Too, it's they're like, mad for them to keep bringing too. Snoke back. Were they mad at Palpatine, too? Like, no, I, at I the end of the day, this, this third movie had an, an impossible job, it, but it chose the worst of two roads. It just stumbled and fell. Yeah, like, it, it just literally kept never, it just It never helped itself. It never helped itself. And I want to talk about one of the laziest things in this movie. Like... In Avengers Endgame, when they made some of the time travel jokes, like, oh, don't worry about it. I thought those were kind of lazy. And I like that movie. But they, they were kind of lazy. This movie takes that to 20. Because <laughs> time travel jokes? To, you no, you know how like, this some, movie? No, in Endgame. You know oh, how yeah, they made yeah, some yeah. of those jokes and people were like, that's lazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they played it for jokes. I get that. That's kind of annoying. But this movie has the mole. And he goes like, he's like, I'm the spy. And people started laughing. Yeah. I was like, are you serious? People did laugh. That's the one, that of, the the worst, that's one of the worst so things I've ever seen in a screenplay. I was like, that's so late. And then he just dies. I was like, why were you even in this trilogy if you're just here to die? You literally took up room and you did nothing for this and mm-hmm. you just hate Kylo Ren. They never even explain why he hates Kylo Ren it's because he abuses him. Like, that's that's a, so it lame. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it bad, wasn't a strong enough reason. Such a lame character. And, and then his new general who was kind of cool, like just had no point to be in this movie besides people hate him. I was us. talking to Dante about this and this is a stupid question. He's not the guy in The Mandalorian, right? Who issues out the call. No. Oh, okay. He looked kind of similar to him in the lighting. I know what you mean. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, a different actor. He <laughs> just got oh one song. <laughs> but I mean, I just I thought that was so lazy. And the thing I was talking about in the non in this non spoiler video that was like so obviously just to sell money was those red troopers. Those yeah. are hyped up for like those have been hyped up for like a year now. And yeah. people are like, oh my god, this is the next big villain. What are they gonna do? And nothing. you know what? They do nothing. Yeah. Same here. thing that everybody else does. Yeah, like in this final right battle, they literally come out for two seconds and they have like jet troopers and stuff. And they're just there to, yeah. so kids will buy that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's so annoying. Like, and when you watch the prequel trilogy, you can see the droids evolve with each movie. They get stronger and new models form. But it's always for the sake of like, like making sense of there's a war. A because there's a war going on. Of course, you're going to improve your forces and technology just like the clone troopers will. Mm-hmm. But this movie is just like, oh, we just have red troopers because red is evil and Palpatine's evil and he likes red. So red troopers and red people on the ships. I was like, what is even the point of that? Mm. What do you think about the Leia death scene? I thought that was kind of dumb because yeah. she died of like kind of heartbreak. Mm-hmm. That is how Palpatine, or I don't know why I said Padme dies. Padme. Padme's mm-hmm. her daughter. Yeah. Because she loses... Or, no, sorry, her, her mom. I didn't mean to say Yeah. 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 Padme's her mom. So that kind of wasn't a big deal to me. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was like horrible. And again, I think they did a good job with Carrie Fisher. But I think the thing that I didn't like was that they did that flashback with her being trained to be a Jedi, which mm-hmm. makes oh, sense my. out of the Mary Poppins things yeah. in The Last yeah. Jedi. Yeah. And I was like, you're doing that simply to justify that in The Last Jedi. That thing in The Last Jedi, like, I hated yeah. that. So did I. Because I was like, there's no way you can have that much force well, power. It, it, but then I felt like they were never been trained. And then they just made sense. Like, oh, she has been trained exactly. so she can survive in space. So I wasn't as upset with that. But I felt bad because like Carrie Fisher is an icon and a legend. And I didn't really feel like... I was sad when she died in the movie at the same way that, let's say, Paul Walker did at the end of Mm. that Fast and Furious when they did that goodbye. 
You know, and I felt like, and it's going to sound bad, but I felt like they should have maybe milked it a little more just to really pull on the heartstrings. Well, if you look at a lot of the best scenes of Star Wars, because a lot of people have pointed out some of George Lucas's dialogue problems, a lot of my favorite scenes, and I think you guys will agree, are ones without words. The binary <laughs> sunset, obviously the lightsaber <laughs> fights. The binary sunset, the Order 66 scene, mm -hmm. the scene where Anakin and Padme are looking at each other through the temples. Mm -hmm. um, the scene in Return of the Jedi where like Darth Vader watches Luke and then kills the Emperor. Mm -hmm. Those are five of my yeah. favorite Star Wars scenes ever. And they all have zero words because Star Wars is very operatic and very epic. Yep. It's the space opera. And it's this Greek tragedy. This movie is just lame. And it just kills Leia off. And it just has none of that epicness that feels like always present in the Star Wars movies. And that goes back to what you guys are saying about that magic. I don't think you'll ever be able to truly quantify George Lucas's magic, but the best way to look at it is just how bad these sequels are because they feel like they have none of that magic. Well, I think, and also, if you don't have the magic, like let's say George is not around, which he is around, mm -hmm. so there's no excuse. But let's say, but then there's people that knew George and there's people that worked yeah. with George, like the Harris Or the they got Lawrence I, No, but I feel like the Mandalorian does a Cassidy. decent job. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about Mark Hamill. I'm talking about uh, Harrison Ford. Well, Har Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford doesn't like Star Wars. And Mark Hamill. No, that's what I'm approve. saying. So at the, at that point, it's like the one person that was like the champion of George Lucas, Mark Hamill, they ignored him basically, literally like discarded him. And he's on the sidelines for two movies, literally. When he appeared, like when he caught the lightsaber, it was like. He didn't even have like if you take out that, that scene, was there's such no reason. A bad scene when she threw the lightsaber in. What what's in it? What's he in the movie for? He could have been at the very end, and and that's it. To make people happy. I really people wish they brought uh, an original Anakin back, and then the, like I wish Anakin we had the, yeah, and yeah, for the the yeah. ghost yeah. scene. No, that well, that okay. would be good, you know. So speaking of that lightsaber, let's break out. Let's break down some of the stupid logistical stuff this movie has to say about the Force. Leia fixed the broken lightsaber from the last movie? Yeah, also, how do you how fix do you a do broken that? lightsaber? I don't think I've ever Just seen it before. With because the Force. <laughs> the Force heals all. The Force <laughs> is going to start putting plants back. They're going to build Alderaan back together in the hey, next one. With the, the next the trilogy. Yes, rebuilding Alderaan, <laughs> episode 10. Okay, this movie says that you can take an object across the galaxy with the Force, which... If you think about that from a physics standpoint, mean it has means on, it has to be the uh, those the, beads. The, the beads. Oh and, yeah, and that means no if sense. I took your watch. Yeah. Right now, it means I would have to grab it. Meaning it would have to touch my skin. Yeah. If I took it from there, it means it would have to teleport. They've yeah. never explained how the force has the ability to teleport. They've explained it had, can have like fast speed. But they didn't explain the but diode either. Between yeah, the diode. They never explained it. He was yeah. like, "Oh, there's a diode. Never happens before." I don't even know what that means. It's I don't know, connection. <laughs> but the whole thing of just like he's like grabs it and then it's there, and then the lightsaber, and then Vader's helmet. And yeah. I was like, "How does this even work? Like they're connected, so they can see everything." That's so lazy. And at the end of the day, things can't just disappear into somebody else's mm -hmm. hand. That was so lazy and so stupid to me. It was very stupid. Yeah. But then again. I'm movie. not defending JJ because JJ, this is I can't. There's no way to. But and he was given a bad hand. But that was established in Ryan. I Johnson's didn't think movie. the idea of them with being the, connected when, was that when bad. There, when they had a connection, and then Kyle had the rain. Mm -hmm. That was the that was from Last Jedi. Yeah. yeah. That, but the, okay, that's the thing. That is a natural element that is said to be connected to the Force. So I'm going to defend Ryan Johnson and uh, retort your point because <laughs> in The Last Jedi she sits down she feels all the organic elements yeah. of the island all the water the trees the dirt the grass because the force flows through all that so of course you would see water not an, a physical tangible object like that's basically saying if they were in this room they would feel the oxygen but they could also grab these microphones no they would well, be you able to feel the oxygen you didn't know what the beats oxygen. were made of <laughs> <laughs> they could have made up rocks. No, but that, that's not no. Corn, no, you know? no. I'm kidding, the I'm Vader kidding. element is like metal, which yeah. is not. No, it was and ridiculous. didn't he break the Vader helmet in the second one? And when he smashed his helmet down into the dust, that was his helmet. No, he broke his helmet when he was smashing yeah. it for sure. But he got mad at another time and like replaced his helmet with Vader's and Did smashed it. it. I, think. I don't remember. That. I thought it was, maybe it was, but I was like, his reassembled mask looked really ugly too. Why? Yeah. Did, and why do you think they decided to bring it back? To be like money, really? I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. yeah. Like I wasn't a fan of his whole chicken. outfit. Like even his mask or his casting uh, as a bad guy is not what's. I happening. think Adam Driver is a terrific actor. I do. Too. And he I is. Really think and he's, he's amazing. Great given, in Marriage Story. Right? I just think he's been given a poorly written character. I don't think like there's any actor who should never take the mask character. off. No, no, no I, I, he should have definitely been written better. And I was originally upset with him taking his mask off. But I feel like if they had worked more on him being a good guy who ended up going to a bad guy who's then still conflicted about if he should be good, where he's talking about, like, I feel the call to the light, that maybe would have worked better. But I just feel like he looks too – even with his face cut down like this, 
he looks too, you know, much like a good guy to be a bad yeah, guy. I, you know? Okay, well, that's... Well, yeah. no, but, uh, but imagine, like, if they would have kept the mask on that whole time, and then when he turned good, then he took, he it, took off. it off. That'd that would have been really But I don't effective. even like the way his mask looks, because well, it looks good with the hood, but when he takes it off, it looks, the looks like weird. Yeah. Within him, because yeah, this... Con- I just hate how hey, people man, have hyped up Kylo Ren to be well. this extremely, like, complex character, because... He's like, oh, I can be good, but I also want to be bad. But at the end of the day, he's like an angry teenager. Yeah, he's literally just angry. And like <laughs> Anakin was kind of that too, but they put so much more justification. Yeah. He was like a slave, and you know, there's a lot of stuff to Anakin. Yeah. Anakin's one of my favorite like fictional characters ever. But what they did with Adam Driver or with Kylo Ren was basically say like, my uncle tried to kill me, so I'm evil now. It's like, <laughs> well, I get why you hate Luke Skywalker, but does that mean you should believe Snoke and stuff? Like, I just think that was so dumb. There's nothing that actually turned him to that. Yeah. Like, he basically had, like, one out of the three things that Anakin had, mm-hmm. and that, like, Anakin saw the corruption within the Jedi as he saw the corruption within Luke. But even that wasn't nearly as much as how Anakin saw a whole order that was flawed as he just hated Luke. But then also there was nothing else. It was just like, yeah. I'm just going to be evil and kill people and we'll bring order to the galaxy. And it's like, well, there was like order and then the Empire is destroyed and now we have the First Order, which aren't the First Order. And then the Final Order. Yeah, now, now the Final Order. I was like, <laughs> first and final. And Palpatine, <laughs> can he... Uh... He can shoot. He can choose which planes to shoot out of the sky with his electricity. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like he, I mean, they, they sent point. in a bunch oh, of planes, man. and all of a sudden everybody's falling. But their guys are. We got this, Captain. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't. All right. Well, I guess we should move on <laughs> to this final act. So, this Poe was giving the speech, and I genuinely I didn't check out of the movie, but I was like watching it, and I didn't realize he was giving the speech till like twenty seconds oh, later. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, he's trying to like motivate me yeah. right now as the audience, and I was like, well. He did a bad job. Yeah. It's not his acting. Again, it's just like... He because he also just copied scene. the line, I think, that Leia said. Yeah, which we're, it, it, Like, uh, as long as there's hope, we're never alone or something yeah, like that. that. Like, <laughs> all right, there's a whole idea of Star Wars. It's like, you don't need all the more forces. You need the force to help you out and stuff. And that connects to some religions and whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of interesting stuff within that. And they've brought that up way better in the Clone Wars and the prequels and the originals. But in this movie, at the end of the day, logistically... You have nothing. And they have like thousands of yeah. what appears to be yeah. thousands of Star Destroyers with Death Stars on them. Yeah. You can't defeat that. You can't just blow up Star Destroyers like nothing. And th- then they get all these starships. Still, none of them are cruisers. None mm. of them are like dreadnoughts. They're so, just people. Yeah, they're just... <laughs> no, but I'm saying like the act... They're all individual fighters. Yeah. So they can't blow up these Star Destroyers unless there's like a bunch of them. And I get there's a lot of them. But that moment literally felt mm. to me like it was like... Oh, did you see Avengers Endgame? He's like, yeah, well, we're on post right now in this movie. <laughs> He's like, well, I need you to change yeah, this. Yeah. He's like, we're going to make this money. Put a yeah. bunch of ships in here. Make uh, Billy D. Williams come here and like, yeah. yo, Yahoo or yeah. whatever. And we're just going to put... Because that moment sucked to me. Yeah. I don't get how all those um, synchronized, like how they all synchronized. Yeah, jumps. how they all made the synchronized hyperspace jump. And how they all just like destroyed the ships. And then Palpatine... Uh, let's talk about this part. Okay. Palpatine... Literally sees Ray, and he's like, "I want you to become evil, you know, blah blah blah." And she's like, "No." And then he's like, "Ah, oh, well, I'm gonna kill you." Yeah. If that sounds some, like something familiar, it might be because he's like, "Take your weapon and strike me down, Luke Skywalker." Yeah, and then you're turning to the dark, dark side. Yeah. We'll be complete. And he's like, "No, I'll never be like that." And he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill you too." Yeah. Did Palpatine learn nothing? And then he's like, "Because you're my mm-hmm. granddaughter." Also, they never think about uh, talk about the fact that he has a granddaughter. Like. Who is the mom and who is the kid? Who is her parents? Yeah, whatever. That doesn't matter because this movie is you know anything. That's gonna be in books and comics. Of course, make make that money. Exactly. But (laughs) same reason like C three PO's red arm that never needed to exist. But like red eyes, you mean? No, the red arm in the the Force Awakens. Yeah, what was that about? Selling toys. Oh. Um, But like, (laughs) but like he literally is just like I'm gonna kill you, and then Kylo Ren comes back. Falls into a, an infinite chasm, which I guess just mean nothing anymore. Because if you look at Empire Strikes Back and you look at Darth Maul, when they both fell, Luke and Darth Maul did not die from those because they fell down a chute. So logistically, you're gonna slide. So mm-hmm. you're not gonna if you hit that blunt impact, you're dead. Uh, the Emperor fell down an infinite chute and would die. Also, he blew up. I thought it was a power chute that he dropped down. He probably got, like <laughs> exploded, yeah. and then also the Death Star exploded. Kylo Ren falls down this thing that looks like uh, it looks like from Minas Morgul from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Like those spikes <laughs> thing at the bottom. So it's like, oh, so there's spikes down there or something. So he died. Nope, he probably just stopped himself because the Force does anything now. And, and trades lightsaber. Don't forget she put the lightsaber. The lightsaber. <laughs> oh yeah. How did I even get whatever? Same way with whatever. the necklace. It whatever. Didn't. It doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden he's like, I'll kill you both. And then they're like, we'll work together. And then 
the, my the least favorite part of this movie scenes, when she gets the two lightsabers and kills Palpatine. That that's literally when you me. That. That's no, I checked out way before that, but that's when I started laughing. I was like, this because there's so many scenes during the final I act. I was like, laughing. is this for real? Like, how this is laughing. just dumb fan service. And then during like the final battle when they're running on like the caribou things, and I was like, there's like ten of them, and there's like an entire <laughs> army. Like, yeah. kill them. How are you losing? And then Ro- like Rose is there with a gun. <laughs> I was like, whatever. But she kills Palpatine by like bursting his skin. Do you remember that one time where Palpatine's electricity was fl- reflected mm-hmm. onto him and he didn't die? But he got older. Yeah, I get that. Wow. Well, he didn't get older. He got wrinkled yeah. and damaged. <laughs> but he just dies. Yeah. And I was like, that's so lazy. Yeah. And then no, but it was two lightsabers before. this time. Yeah. Not one. So yeah. that means yeah. that's what you needed. Let's think about that though. She's never been trained to deflect lightning. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what you say. She was trained by by Leia in that year. She was not trained by that because. I mean, she wasn't trained on it. It's logistically, it <laughs> just doesn't make sense. There's not many people that can do it. That means if Mace Windu, who had a tough time reflecting this lightning, who's a Jedi master, if he had a second lightsaber, he would kill Palpatine? This None of this would have happened? Should have had two is purple blades. Yeah, was, yeah, seriously. Like, that's so stupid. The lazy answer is that she had the power of all the Jedi. Yeah. So yeah, let's mean, break that uh, down. Uh, so he says, okay, I am all saying. the Sith. And then he, she's like, well, I'm all the Jedi. <laughs> so childish. Who wrote this? Yeah, that, like, yeah. That's bad. That's trash. That's worse than like oh, a lot uh, of the people's lines. There's I a lot of lines. I can't in this defend. Movie. There's anything. one line for me. I'm going to talk about it later. But that means if, and then we hear all the voices. So the, what I was talking about in the spoiler review, a scene I liked was hearing that because I was like, oh, that's cool to hear all these people There's I love from yeah. better movies and shows. But then I was like, no, I see what you're doing. Trying to attack my nostalgia and it won't work because. That's not how the Force works, to quote Han Solo. That's not you can't how. just give people the yeah. Force, and then she's like, oh, I have all of your power? Kill him. because." And then they're all like, Ray, do it. You can do it. And I was like, so disrespectful to Anakin and Luke, who helped bring like peace to the galaxy. And then she just like kills him, and then blows up all ships. I was like, that was the worst third act in Star Wars history, because it's so rushed. It's not even entertaining. The action isn't even good. They chose a planet that was like dark. I was like, did you learn nothing from Game of Thrones? I was like, stop choosing dark <laughs> things for like set pieces. And then they have all these flashes. But it is the Sith planet, which is... It wasn't, yeah. though. I mean, Exegon was just like, it's one of the Sith planets. But Moraban, they could have just done Moraban, which is a much better looking planet. And it's like red, which is evil. Uh, uh, and Palpatine uh, loves uh, red, Mustafar. clearly. It w- Moraban's a lot like Mustafar. Oh, uh, is it? Okay. Yeah, and I just don't know why they didn't do that. And they were like, oh, we're just going to make a new planet because money... Um, and honestly, it's just, I was so frustrated at how she killed him, like how quickly it happened. I was mm-hmm. like, this is the biggest moment. If this is the conclusion to the Skywalker saga, nine years, 42 year, or nine movies and 42 years of storytelling, and all she needs to do is just like reflect and you're dead. That is so terrible. That's so disrespectful. If you look at all the biggest Star Wars moments, they've not, they've just like occurred. Star Wars has never tried to make a moment because the moments are intrinsically placed mm-hmm. in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. They happen because they happen. Marvel makes moments, yeah. and that's not a bad thing. Marvel does it well, but that's not what Star Wars does. Star Wars has never stopped the camera and, and said, we're yeah. having a moment yeah. now. Yeah. 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 The moments occur. All people's favorite Star Wars scenes just occur. They're not, like, dwelling on that's it. Good this point. movie yeah. all is always just trying to make moments out of stuff, and it was just so unfunny. Yeah, yeah. Un- that, is, that is true that they do try to make moments, and, yeah. so, and they're spe- obvious. Spe- yeah, they're very obvious, and they're very blatant. The worst moment, though, the worst moment, Mm. Is when Kylo Ren gave his force to Rey, and then no, let's let's break it down. <laughs> he dies, and she's about to die, uh, and then he kisses her, and then he dies. Uh, I was like, I felt bad for Kylo Ren. I was like, you disrespected Kylo Ren, a character I don't even like. Uh, I was like, so nobody in this trilogy matters but Rey. She's the only character who matters. That was such all, a bad. But she's always be been the only character. No, but like at least they placed no, it would have Kylo Ren. Ren. I'm not saying I'm not agreeing. Did some stuff together. I'm not like, agreeing. If, no. I'm if just Kylo saying Ren that is supposed to be a mirror version of Anakin, could he at least have redemption like Anakin? It's not and I get he did, yeah. but it wasn't even interesting. Like Anakin, he held a blue lightsaber. Yeah, was and yeah. if you think about it, like Luke says to Anakin on the Death Star and Return of the Jedi, like he's like, "Father, like you know." I forgot the exact line, but he's like, oh, I've, I want you to come with me. Like, I've saved you. And he's like, you've already have. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like, and he knows he's he's sinned, you know. He he dies as a man who's redeemed himself. Mm-hmm. And he gets, you know, a redemption through being a force ghost, which apparently doesn't even matter because everybody can do that now. <laughs> yeah. Which I was like, in the prequels, they show how hard it is because you have yeah. to go to Dagobah to train. And Qui-Gon tells Yoda, you have trained. Yoda trains Obi-Wan. And... Though it is a plot hole that Anakin becomes a go- uh, Force ghost, you can also just be like, well, Anakin's very strong with the Force. Yeah. Yeah. Not Leia's not like that strong to just become a Force ghost. Mm-hmm. But 
disregarding that, that scene is genuinely my least favorite Star Wars scene. It's worse than everything with Jar Jar Binks. Is that the worse. ghost? No, the scene where she kills Palpatine. It oh, was so yeah. rushed. And then there's all these people with the hoods on, like, oh, that was all. And I was like, where did they come from? You, what are you yeah. guys doing here? Like, are they you got just, killed like, like crazy, though. Once yeah. <laughs> stuff started falling. Like, and the CGI was really bad. And he just blows yeah. up all the ships. I was like, Palpatine, when did you become that strong to just blow up like thousands of ships? Yeah, why like did you that? even need a Death Star? They basically said that these people are stronger with the. They've always made the point that in the original trilogy, those people weren't as strong with the Force as the prequel trilogy because the prequel trilogy people had training mm -hmm. and it's not a bad or a good thing it's a story thing and it makes sense but these people without like training or Rey trained for like a year she became pow more powerful than every Jedi mm -hmm. ever when Anakin who trained for like 10 years as a Padawan than Jedi Knight and eventually you know he turns evil was not that strong he was the chosen one yeah. he was the strongest Jedi and he was supposed to and you can nope, see how anymore. strong Anakin is in the Clone Wars on the Mortis episodes but like they never really made Anakin as strong as Rey is in this movie and that's not a bad thing for their part it's a bad thing for this movie's part but they did the same thing with Luke they never made Luke as strong as, as Rey but also at the same time like you said yeah. Rey never got hurt so it kind of makes it you know you it's don't really fun to root watch. for her that much yeah. because like the, she, oh the she's the gonna the stakes win. in this movie feel non-existent and they're yeah. supposed to be bigger than they ever are because Palpatine's assembled a fleet and there's like 35 like rebels left like yeah, you yeah. can literally see them in one shot exactly you know? whole, like that's something I'll give to The Last Jedi too they did a good job ending the movie like where, where you know our resources are low oh, and yeah. like we're just struggling to win and then they do it off screen they unite systems Lando just goes by and he's like hey like help us against yeah, this battle yeah. and they're like okay and they do it off screen yeah what did you guys think of Billy D. Williams? He was, he was pretty good. Like yeah, he, he cool. says, like, for what he could do. Yeah. yeah. Like, See, I feel again like they like, should have left the old guys in the path. I feel like when you bring them back and you're not prepared, he, he to was do the right damage thing. control. Yeah, like, he nostalgia. was damage control because <laughs> Akbar died and Solo died and Skywalker died and yeah, everybody. Just like, but even then, like that, I, I just felt like even Luke and Leia. It, I don't know if they really. The, had a place in this story because the story wasn't put together so well. It wasn't put, it wasn't put together for them. Exactly. That's and it, it should yeah. have been if you're going to use them. Otherwise, just get a completely different actor. And yeah. then just say, this is Luke Skywalker, yeah. 80 years old. You yeah. know what I mean? The scene um, in this movie where, like, Lando kills the... Or, no, sorry. Where, yeah, where Lando, like, does his introduction. I was like, oh, okay, you know, they're, they're introducing Lando. And then I thought about it, and I was like... There, he's. I was like, why are you in this movie? Because that could have been anybody else, mm -hmm. you know. And then, been. like, why did Poe have a girlfriend? Why does everybody have to have a girlfriend in this movie yeah. too? And, and then, okay, <laughs> let's talk about the end. Are you? Do you guys have anything more to say about the first like eighty five percent of the movie? I didn't like how Poe had to get his little girlfriend with pilot suit. Poe doesn't they even, even have, tried to hook up Finn mm. with Rose. Poe I didn't have like a relationship it. with Ray. Like they literally just argued. But if you think about it, they met in at the end of the last Jedi yeah. on crate yeah. before they left. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then when I was talking on the spoiler view, uh, um, like that was lazy, was that on the ship on the Millennium Falcon, there's a guy there and he's like, hey, and he's like, oh, yeah. God. and he's like, yeah. says the alien thing and they never address him. No. And then there's that other guy who gives him the information who was played by Mark Hamill, by the way. Oh, was it? Yeah, I could hear it in the voice. That, or he sounded like Mark yeah. Hamill. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah. He sounded a lot like Mark Hamill. But then they have that guy and there's a stab, none of this is established. Stuff is yeah. just happening. And it's like, the first 40 minutes, you know when you like have a script and it's like interior, exterior, location, mm -hmm. a scene goes on and then it moves? Not locations, but it moves like focus of a scene, but it's in the same place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This movie doesn't do that for the first like 40 minutes. Yeah. It just it goes location. It goes scene, yeah. but yeah. there's no second part to a scene until like 40 minutes in the movie. Yeah, it just That's jumps. horrible. Yeah. That's yeah. really bad. That's never happened in the Star Wars movies before. No. No, it hasn't. Um, there's no... Rebuttal. Like, yeah, and I want to talk about the ending, uh, which was very Return of the Jedi with people celebrating. It was first of all, it was a bad version of Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. But second it of was all, the I they didn't did care. that scene in every movie. I didn't of care Star about eighty so percent of the people who people were like looking at each other. They were like, "We did it," and I was like, "I don't even care about you. Who, who are, are you? you? <laughs> Get out of this movie." Like, Get like, out of this Paul movie. looked at his we girlfriend or whoever the bounty hunter was. He was like, "I was like," and then he tried to do that little. Yeah, am I supposed to care about this? Because I and then Poe was like, "Oh, Ray, I love you." I was like. You know, we, we as the audience have seen you guys talk twice, and they've both been vicious arguments. Yeah. You don't even like each other. Yeah. Like, how am I supposed to believe yeah, But even their know? hug at the end wasn't what's up. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, like, when you see Luke and Han and Leia at the end of Return of the Jedi, you feel happy. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah they went through free. it together. Yeah, yeah and, and they like, get their awards, too. You know? Although, yeah, like, I knew. yeah, no, it, that celebration was lame. And I want to talk about maybe the most cringeworthy line of all in all of Star Wars. 
Um, a lot of people talk about the Saiyan dialogue from Attack of the Clones, which isn't even that bad because, well, of course you would hate Saiyan. He grew up on a slave Saiyan planet. Mm-hmm. And there are some bad lines in the prequels. There are a couple lines that are okay. really bad. There is no line as bad as, where are you from? I don't know. Let's, Let's find, find out. out. Uh, <laughs> so what? Bad. If what? they if they make a TV show <laughs> off of that, they literally intentionally put that in I, there just to make a TV they show. Might, I was thinking they about reading the script, and then she's movie. gonna it's gonna be his daughter. That's gonna I be the worst part. I was thinking about reading the script for this movie, and it's like Lando, where are you from? Question mark. And then it's like her. I don't even know her character's name. It's like I don't know. It's like let's find out. And then I thought oh, about she's like E N or something. Why like would that you like, write that into this movie? Why? Why and is it needed? She also has that thing where she's similar to Finn, so it's like oh they're both stormtroopers. And, you know, they should relate to each other. And I was like, that's just pointless. None of this matters. There's a couple of scenes like that. Like, that, that could have just been left in the chat. Like there's a lot of scenes that should have existed yeah. that didn't. Yeah, like, there's one scene where the guy walks up. Chewie's sitting down. The guy walks up and goes, come on, guy, we, boy, or whatever. Something, come on, we need you or something. Yeah. Come on, I'm like, why do you have to tell Chewie that, you know, <laughs> Chewie's been in every battle. Like, he's the first <laughs> one fighting. Why do, you, why do you have to tell him, you know, that we Chewie's need been him? Fighting yeah. like why is that needed? Wars, yeah, yeah why is that needed? That like, was so dumb. It's, it's like I honestly think that I can't even appropriately criticize this movie until like I have I'm not buying this on DVD. I will not spend money on this movie. But if it is ever on Disney Plus, I will like break it down scene by scene why this is an objectively bad movie and why it's worse than the prequels because there's so many lines that I've like forgot about in my head yeah. right now that are just terrible. And there it's just like embar- it doesn't get better in second view, and I'll tell you that. What oh, yeah. This is because I saw it twice. Taj is a I saw it, I saw Taj it back is a to back. I saw it the first time I had such low expectations, I told you guys. Like, and then the second time it's I just wanted to solidify. Was it worse or better the second time? You know what it was? It, no, no, <laughs> because the second hours. time you knew what you expected. <laughs> you expected. But then it, it, it magnified everything. Like, it magnified the good things and it magnified the but bad But did you ever say anything you were like, oh, I didn't notice that before? No, the second it was just like, oh, that was a bad line. <laughs> oh, oh, that, oh, yeah, I remember that. Okay, <laughs> that was a useless thing. It's just like re- reaffirming everything. I mean, or, the movie oh, was I did like, like this. a scavenger yeah, hunt yeah. for the, a part of it. It was like a lame scavenger hunt. Yeah, it's, and the Star Wars has always had intercutting be a big part of it. Star Wars is pretty much always binary storytelling. There's yeah. usually mm-hmm. one thing going on at, for these characters and one thing going on with these characters. The only movie that's an exception is A New Hope, but. Star Wars has intercutting because intercutting is not what that is. Intercutting is through an actual like contained scene <laughs> or action sequence or whatever, and it's cutting between two, sometimes three, sometimes four, like Phantom Menace. Yeah. And this movie felt like the entire thing was intercutting because it never let any scene breathe. It was like here, 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 new plan, new plan. Yeah. They're, they're even almost parodying themselves when he was doing the hyperspace runs at the beginning, like new plan, new plan, new plan. And yeah. I was like, this just is so rushed and so yeah. poorly paced. Someone said it best. They they really believe that this should have been two movies like just mm-hmm. it's like reestablish something and then go to the like because it really felt like they just took two movies and smashed it together and said we have to make something mm-hmm. out of this because and not well and not done well and the writing was god awful like yeah. it really was the script I can't defend the script like I wish I could there's there's some parts that are very nostalgic which is what always gets me I'm not sucker for nostalgia there's like one or two funny jokes yeah. Comedy was pretty bad too, though. The comedy was pretty comedy bad. Comedy, this whole trilogy, I, mean, I hated that. But it, but the whole thing for me is like, and you said it best, Prince. It's like, you know, bring like they should have really just focused on bringing back the older people first, and mm-hmm. and and gave them their proper ending, and then done the new. But because it's like, I really think of like they really peed on everyone. Yeah. Like, Structurally, R two was works, like useless. But- I just don't think the old people should have been in this movie. Yeah, they, they should have. Other than having Luke Skywalker in them, would you, not have been in it. Because you can't give a whole movie to characters and then have your second one introduce new ones and mm-hmm. then the third one conclude that. That just doesn't make sense. What they they should have just done, waited until like nobody was really around from the old trilogy. Yeah, or they could have just made one movie, you know? Yeah. I get see, we Star were Wars promised, about trilogies, see, but I'm not, old enough to be promised that there's a 789 with Luke Skywalker yeah. and Harrison I never knew about that. See, that's a thing. That was an awful promise. The whole thing was... Is Lucas going to do seven, eight, nine first, or one, two, three? I would first? like to see, that. and that was a thing. And when he decided to do one, two, three first, we we're like, okay, we'll hold on. Seven, eight, nine's yeah. coming. No one's died yet. You know, that's how we're looking at it. As yeah. someone that's been waiting thirty years for this, yeah. And now it's like, then you're like, that's why everyone was so mad when Mark Hamill or Luke Skywalker was not used correctly in number two, is because. Mm-hmm. No, we waited 30-something years yeah. to see him do something. I got to say, too, that Han Solo scene, 
I really wanted to like that. Because right when he said, hey, kid, I was like, I only brought Harrison Ford. Yeah. It's going to have a father-son mm-hmm. moment. And relationships, familiar relationships are such a big part of Star yeah. Wars. And I was like really hoping that to be a good scene. And I just thought it was All really important. Like, and both those people are good brand. actors. Yeah. yeah, both those people are good actors. They're just working with a bad script and a poor story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. And I, I think I'm just going to end this off by talking about the very final scene. Ooh. So first, before I get to that, let me say that I was talking to somebody who knew I saw this movie, and they were like, what did you think? And I was like, I didn't like it. And they they were like, oh, does uh, Kylo Ren uh, turn good, or does he stay evil? And I was like, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you. And they go, all right, let me predict something, and you just tell me if I'm right or wrong. I was like, I won't do that, but I'll listen to what you have to say. They predicted the entire movie. Wow. Really? And I was like, Palpatine's daughter? No, not that, not that. No, but they were, no, what I meant by Kylo Ren, they go, I bet Ray and Kylo are going to fall in love. Kyle's gonna turn good and I'm dying for the greater good. I was like, oh, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> we'll like, see. Oh my God. Yeah. He just predict- and how do you fall in love after just so trying to kill each other for the past yeah, like, that two was movies? Worst moments Weak. than Anakin and Padme. Come at me. But <laughs> it was. But honestly, that that proves just how uninspired and just uncreative this movie can be. Yeah. The whole trilogy, but especially this movie. But I want to talk about this last scene because right when they cut to the shot of the sky, I was like, they're on Tatooine and they're gonna end it with the binary sense. Uh, mm-hmm. And that pissed me off beyond belief so because bad. Yeah. that is one of the most like in terms Sacred. of what when I'm dying on this earth and when I'm sitting in my deathbed there are going to be a few things that stick with me and one of them is the idea of the binary sunset what that means to Star Wars the story of Star Wars the original saga Anakin Skywalker's redemption fall and his son Luke and all that they took one of the most iconic images in American fiction and wiped their butt and culture and they wiped their butt with it. <laughs> they First, they also had de-aged Force Ghosts, which was dumb anyway. Yeah. But mm-hmm. more than... Uh, wait, was Carrie Fisher de She was, right? No, I think at the end when she saw them and looked at them, they were both very okay, aged. Okay, never mind. Yeah, never mind. Both very, Sorry. Yeah. So, but anyway, they had Force Ghosts. And I remember, I was like, wait, this looks like the end of Return of the Jedi. Which again, this movie is just copying Return of the Jedi. The hero who defeated the bad guys, uh, actually who defeated Palpatine, mm-hmm. stands here. Force Ghosts look at them and give them assurance. That doesn't sound like something you know. Luke... Obi-Wan Yoda, Anakin. Mm-hmm. And it was the same thing. But this time, they used the Binary Sunset. And they used the song of the Force, which is probably my favorite song to ever exist. Mm. And I got mad. Every time, and I'm not joking, every time I watch the scene with Luke and then the end of Revenge of the Sith, I get goosebumps because they're two of my favorite scenes in cinema history. Mm-hmm. And they are part of one of the greatest stories ever told. And they abuse that for nostalgia in this movie. And I can't explain how mad that made me. And then she has a yellow lightsaber, so I guess suggests that she's like a gray Jedi mm-hmm. because that's been an idea brought up as, you know, like with these new Star Wars stories because they bring it up in Star Wars Rebels too mm. that the Jedi Order is flawed, which I agree with, but then they don't address that. They're just like, yellow lightsaber. Well, they probably just expect toys. you to know the lore. They expect you to be like, oh. I didn't like how she didn't just yeah. own her name. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why did you change? You're not a Skywalker. Exa- you're exactly. A That's literally like taking somebody's last name. Like, you're born into your thing, whether it be blood or adoption or whatever, and you you accept that family right. Yeah. You know, you carry your creed and you honor your name. Or you re- or if you have something like, you know, Palpatine, which is obviously an infamous name, then you reshape the narrative. To Palpatine, that name. Yeah. yeah, no. You, you fix that. <laughs> Palpatine is Ray obviously P. Palpatine's obviously a name of infamy throughout the galaxy. You know, and her taking the name Skywalker is like, you don't earn the right to be yeah. Skywalker. You don't earn a last name. You were born with it, and you earn an honor, mm-hmm. and you honor that last name. And maybe that was the whole idea of this trilogy, was that your bloodline doesn't define you, your family doesn't define you. And that's a cool idea, and they could have done it a trillion times better. But the idea of, like, Kylo being like, I'm Ben Solo, uh, you know, and I'm not Darth Vader. Well, it's like, but you idolize Darth Vader, first mm-hmm. of all, which is another thing. But... That whole message was so poorly conveyed that I don't even know why people like cared about it. And I don't know what gives her the right to earn the name Skywalker. Is it because she killed Palpatine? I guess so, but real people killed Palpatine years before her. <laughs> real Jedi. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I don't even hate Rey. I don't think she's that bad of a character. No, she's what super cool. What they've done cool. with her just making... Like, she's no, just a, I, I'm OP. actually the least she's upset about Rey out of everybody in this thing. I think I'm least upset about Poe because he didn't do much. Yeah, but I don't like Poe being, at all. Like he got worse I like through Poe. the. He, like, I think Oscar really Isaac cool. does actually a really good job of being charismatic. They just give his character. Yeah, nothing. but he plays they that classic him. reckless pilot who's like in any like movie. Star you know Wars. What I mean? That is Star Wars. But it's, yeah, that's uh, been around in Star Wars. Yeah, but he's no different. He's just worse yeah. version of it. And the whole thing too. I say, oh, <laughs> let's talk about the rise of Skywalker. Why we think this is such a bad name? Because. You're saying this ends this nine Skywalker's movie story. It's not just that. Well, Ben Solo's Skywalker, even though it's not his last He's name. dead. He's dead. <laughs> but 
the idea of the Skywalker with each trilogy inheriting things and you know rising and falling and bringing or- order and peace to the galaxy, being the real chosen mm-hmm. one, balance, whatnot, is not in this movie because though Palpatine mm-hmm. technically is related to Anakin because he had a hand in his birth and mm-hmm. ended up kind of being his actual father as they ruled the galaxy together, that is besides the point. A Palpatine is at, in this movie. She is related to Palpatine. She does all this stuff. So there is no rise of Skywalker. Which Skywalker rises? They're all dead. Leia dies. Luke from the Kylo ashes dies. of the wreck when he grabs the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, non, the non-tangible touches the tangible. That's the real rise. Like, I don't... Not much else to say. I, Maybe they adopted her. Luke, it's too late they're both dead. Palpatine? Palpatine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe then, that was it. Maybe and then they, they the shot scene. the scene of like, you know, the hut of Palpatine. They had like the moisture things yeah. to show like, oh, we're back where it all started. And I'm going to bury these lightsabers here. And even though we blew up one of them in the previous movie because Ryan Johnson wanted to subvert Star Wars. And it's just all clashing together to make this big chunk of bad storytelling. Yeah. And more than that... It's not Hopefully even Hopefully Disney fun. learns though that they need to keep their, their story straight and the, the best way to do it is by keeping the director straight. You know what I mean? Like Disney did Maybe not even a director because yeah. like George Lucas didn't direct the original or he didn't it's direct all the original pre- trilogy but he had a direct yeah, influence the, on yeah. the story. You, this is just you need direct somebody, yeah. the director. If you have a trilogy it's the same thing as if you had a show and Disney, you I sense runners. conflict within Think you. Think about all the shows that have switched showrunners and people started hating those shows because they're like well, what happened to the show? Yeah. That is how that works. You can't just have somebody have... You can't give somebody all the keys to this vision and then take it away, mm-hmm. give somebody, and then give it back to them. Because then it's all like discombobulated. It's going to be different. Honestly, I, I have so many things that I've probably not said that I still hate about this movie, but I've run out of energy. And you know what? When I watch Star Wars again, because I watch it like every six months, year or so, when I watch the, the true original saga of Star Wars, I will not have this movie in my mind. This movie is honestly like almost fan fiction in a way, and <laughs> non-canon almost. Yeah, yeah like, for real. If they're gonna take every, there book, are fan-made sh- stuff on YouTube oh, that's way. If better. they're gonna take every book like ever, in, like Disney and Star Wars, and be like, none of that's canon, then I can be like, well, you're not canon, Disney. Yeah. You know, and the fans don't even like the Star Wars. And if you do like this movie, you're probably just a casual fan. And I don't say it to be mean, like. It I think like as a mean. movie, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, sorry to be mean, but if you like, it's the same way, like if. People like the Transformers movies, you know, like they enjoy mm, them for what they are, just popcorn it. movies. And, you know, if you like this movie, though this movie isn't even enjoyable to me, if you like this movie, like just you had fun in it, you know, more power to you. I don't want to spread hatred on the air. That's why, not why I started this channel. It's not why, uh, you know, or we started this channel. And that's it. Yeah. 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 Bring no. Disney down. No. no. <laughs> and like, I love Star Wars more than anything. Like I said, when I'm on my deathbed, I will probably be thinking about Star Wars. That's how much I love it. But, I definitely don't want to be thinking about this Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, super disappointing. But honestly, I expected it, and, and that's the, I didn't expect it to be. That's, that's why I was so somber with uh, the second one because I knew there was no hope. It's like the, the go plan- watch Flash today. I think you'll like it more. You've only seen it once. Right? I've but I've seen this. I've seen enough. No, like, you've I've, seen I've re, I've, re- I've re seen certain things. No, and that, it's not fair. Dude, watch dude. the whole thing, and you will like it more than Rise of Skywalker. I bet you. Mm. It's going to piss me off because I'm going to know the trap that he was set in. Honestly, the episode of Clone Wars, um, I don't know if you'll remember this, it's very uneventful, uh, where the bunch of droids are trapped in a desert. That's the whole episode. Mm. Is better than this movie. Sounds like it. And that's the worst yeah. episode of that entire show. Well, I think we're interested to see what you guys think. I would say for me, it's about like, what do you think about Ray being Palpatine's daughter and not keeping the Palpatine or name? just being able to kill him? Where again, she's like, oh, all the Jedi live in you, but they yeah. never said how they if they actually gave her any power because she, who has trained for like a year, killed a dude who's been training for like He's what like, ninety years. I mean, I don't even know how old Palpatine is, but. He's like killed so many Jedi. Very he is powerful. so ridiculously strong. The only person who was shown to be able to keep up with him was Yoda. Mm-hmm. Anakin couldn't even keep up with him, you know, at a point. But no, no, you can't. It's uh, he has two lightsabers. Yeah, and then also I, I'm interested to know what everybody thinks about like Finn kind of having the Force and just them being think so. About I think they're lenient with the Force. The worst in third act in Star Wars history. The space battle wasn't even fun to watch. The lightsaber fight early was lame. Yeah. Like it just happens so quick. It sucks. I don't know what <laughs> it's horrible. You know. So if you if you like this movie, if you have any thoughts about any of the stuff we've said, let us know uh, and like, subscribe, and we'll uh, see you next time.